This episode of Real Life Lore is brought to you by Anchor Soundcore Portable Speaker Series. Click the link in the description for more information. Think for a moment about how loud the loudest sound that you've ever heard in your life was. If you're hearing my voice right now after experiencing an incident like that, then it was nowhere near the loudest sound that has ever happened. Humans at various points in history have heard sounds so loud from a source that they heard them from thousands of kilometers away from their actual origin. But before I can explain what the loudest sound was and how incredible it is, I first need to explain how sound is measured in terms of loudness in the first place. This image here is a sound wave. For the purpose of this video, all you need to know about really is the amplitude of the wave, because it's the amplitude that determines how loud a sound appears to be to humans. The decibel scale is what's used to measure the loudness of a sound, and it's important to note that the scale is logarithmic. This means that 10 decibels is 10 times more powerful than 0 decibels, and 20 decibels is 10 times more powerful than 10 decibels, but 100 times more powerful than 0 decibels. With all of that in mind, let's start building our way up to the loudest sound in history by beginning at 10 decibels, which is about how loud standard human breathing is and is barely audible to the average human. 10 times more powerful than this at 20 decibels is the rustling of leaves in the wind, and then 10 times more powerful than that at 30 decibels is a whisper. We're still in pretty quiet territory, so moving higher up to 44 decibels is the average ambient noise that's present in a library. A little bit higher than that at 50 decibels is the noise of a normal conversation in your home. And 10 times more powerful than that at 60 decibels is the noise of a normal conversation in a restaurant. 70 decibels is about the noise that a vacuum cleaner produces, and it's a good comparison for all the noises that are coming up next. Twice as loud as that at 80 decibels is the noise created by a garbage disposal. And four times as loud as a vacuum cleaner at 90 decibels is the noise that you would hear from a motorcycle engine if you were seven and a half meters away from it. 100 decibels would be eight times louder than a vacuum cleaner and is roughly the noise produced by operating a jackhammer. Twice as loud as that though at 110 decibels is the average threshold that humans begin to experience pain at, and 108 to 114 decibels is the average noise produced at a rock concert. My friends over at Airplane Mode created a video about the value of music produced at concerts like this, so make sure to check out their video next in the description. A chainsaw produces a noise of 120 decibels, which is 32 times louder than the vacuum cleaner is. A shotgun firing right next to you is about 130 decibels, and about the loudest noise that you'll probably ever likely hear in your life is a passenger jet taking off if you were standing 25 meters away from it, which would be around 150 decibels. This is also the level of sound that can immediately rupture your eardrums instantly if you're ever exposed to it. But the loudest sound ever heard by humans that we've been building up to this entire time was unbelievably more loud than this. In the spring of 1883, the volcanic island of Krakatoa in modern-day Indonesia exploded with a force of 200 megatons, a force so powerful it obliterated the entire island. I've talked about this eruption before in a previous video, but I didn't spend much time talking about the noise that it generated. Any sound over 194 decibels begins to distort into more of a shock wave from an explosion rather than an actual sound wave. But the Krakatoa eruption generated an estimated 310 decibels at the epicenter of the explosion. This force was so loud that sailors located 64 kilometers away from the blast had their eardrums ruptured. The noise was even louder though than this may seem at first, because a pressure gauge located 161 kilometers away measured a sound of 180 decibels. It would have taken the sound about 7 minutes and 53 seconds to reach that far from the volcano, and it still would have been enough to not only rupture your eardrums if you were standing there, but also knock the wind out of your lungs and shatter 
glass windows on buildings. It's possible you could have actually died from the sound waves impacting and smashing through your body. But even if you didn't, you would be guaranteed to be permanently deaf for life afterwards. If the sound from the blast originated in Central Park in New York City instead, then everybody located inside of this circle would either be dead or permanently deaf for life afterwards. In real life, the volcanic blast was heard as far away as Perth, Australia, whose residents reported hearing what sounded like gunshots. It was also heard on the Indian Ocean island of Rodriguez, 4,800 kilometers away, whose residents reported what they believed to be cannon fire. Imagine if this time you were standing in Central Park and you heard what sounded like a cannon firing somewhere around you, only to find out later that the sound didn't come from near you at all, but rather came all the way from Ireland, and it took a time of nearly four hours to reach your ears. The sound wave began to grow less and less audible to humans the farther it traveled until the frequency became too low to be heard. Even though the waves couldn't be heard by humans themselves past a certain range, our instruments detected that the waves generated from the blast circled around the entire planet three and a half times. So the next time you turn on your speakers with the volume a little too high, at least it won't be loud enough to cause a global catastrophe. But if you want a good speaker to listen to some of these sounds at a more reasonable level, then why not check out the Anchor Soundcore Boost? You can listen to me or any of your other favorite channels talk for up to 12 hours using this, which is about how long it took the sound wave from the Krakatoa Blast to arrive in San Diego. You could have ridden this wave for 12 hours, listened to 250 different songs, Songs, and since the speaker is water resistant, it would have lasted you for your entire journey. It features dual drivers and twin subwoofers that delivers 20 watts of high quality audio. This means it can fill an entire room with sound, which is great for everything from podcasts to parties. Its small, minimalist design means that you can leave it on your desk or take it with you on the go. And you can even power external devices with a USB port packing Anchor's trademarked battery technology. Soundcore Boost comes with an 18 month warranty and 66 feet of Bluetooth range, so check out the link in the description to learn more about Anchor's Soundcore Boost. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, then I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel by clicking here. If you'd like to support the channel directly and receive some cool rewards, then check out my Patreon by clicking here, and I'll see you again soon on Friday for another new real-life lore video then.